Well, howdy. Kathy Drew, owner and creative director of Interactive Entertainment. And we're here once again with Blazing the West and another story of a legend of the Old West. And this one truly is a legend. Legendary Charlie Parkhurst. Now, Charlie was a stagecoach driver. In fact, the most famous of them all. And he's here today, and he's going to tell you his story. And be sure and pay attention, especially stay with it all the way to the end, because there's a secret surprise. Take it away, Charlie Parkhurst. Well, hey there. I'm Charlie Parkhurst, and I've been asked to tell you my story. It ain't a very long one, but I hope you find it interesting nonetheless. I ran away from an orphanage when I was 12 years old. It just wasn't a place I wanted to be anymore. It wasn't long before I met a man named Ebenezer Balch, who had a livery stable in Providence, Rhode Island. He welcomed me into his house, and I figured he was thinking he finally had the son he never had. Balch taught me to work as a stable hand, and eventually, I got to spend a great deal of time around his horses. Ebenezer, you see, had a special way with horses, and he decided to teach me to drive a coach, first with one horse, then with four, and eventually with six horses. Now, for those of you who don't know, a stagecoach is a four-wheeled public coach used to carry paying passengers and light packages on journeys long enough to need a change of them horses. It's usually pulled by four horses. I worked for Balch for several years and in 1848, a man who also worked as a stagecoach driver by the name of James E. Birch was headed to California for the gold rush. Another man named Frank Stevens was going with him and it sounded like a golden opportunity for me too. Get it? Golden opportunity. <laughs> I was 36 years old when I left for California sailing on R.B. Forbes from Boston all the way to Panama. We had to cross the isthmus. Funny word, that isthmus. Anyways, we crossed overland to pick up the other ships on the west coast and in Panama, I met a man named John Morton, who was returning to San Francisco where he owned a drayage business. When we got to San Francisco, Morton asked me to drive for him. And on one of the journeys, one of his horses went lame. While I was checking out his leg, the dang horse kicked me right smack in the eye. I lost my sight, but not my eye and it meant I had to wear a patch over my eye. I soon became known as One-Eyed Charlie or Cock-Eyed Charlie. I didn't really much care for either of those names, have to tell you. But hey, eye patch names and all, I was on the move once again. Remember that guy I mentioned earlier, James E. Birch? Well, old Birch had arrived in Sacramento and began using an old ranch wagon he drove himself, hauling passengers from Sacramento City to Coloma in the rugged foothills of the Sierra Nevada. He also drove them back and forth to Sutter's Fort he was building. For the 50-mile trip, traveling 10 to 12 miles an hour, Birch charged two ounces of gold, which was about $32 in 1849. Birch had a knack at forecasting business areas, too, and pretty soon his one coach became several, and he was running the California Stage Company. I tell you all this because it was darn lucky for me to go to work for Birch, and I became one of the finest stagecoach drivers on the West Coast, if I do say so myself. I soon got a better nickname, too, Six Horse Charlie. One of my regular routes was Stockton to Mariposa, the great stage route, then San Jose to Oakland, and San Juan to Santa Cruz. I carried mail and passengers, had to deal with hold-up attempts, bad weather, and perilous primitive trails. 
It was hard and exhausting work, but there were some fun times too. Like the time I carried Mr. Mark Twain, who rode up on the seat with me and told some wonderful stories. I heard later he included my stories as stage coaching in one of his books called Roughing It. I enjoyed smoking cigars, chewing tobacco, and drinking whiskey. I did a lot to show I was a tough man. It helped me to intimidate outlaws and get me jobs as a stagecoach driver. I think it was about 1872 when I started seeing the railroads cutting into the stagecoach business and heck, I was ready to retire anyway. So I moved to Watsonville, California and for 15 or so years, I worked at farming and lumbering and raising chickens. I began to suffer rheumatism and I died on December 18, 1879 from tongue cancer. But heck, that's not the end of my story, you know. You see, I was born Charlotte Darkey Parkhurst in 1812 in Sharon, Vermont. My parents died when I was a year old and that's how I ended up in that orphanage. I was a tomboy as a child, they say. But yet, I was a woman, and all those years I drove the stagecoach no one ever knew until I died. I was more comfortable living my life as a man, and so I did my entire life. Hey, there's one more thing you should know about me. The Santa Cruz Sentinel reported in October of 1868 that I was on the official poll list for the election in 1868, and yep, I recollect that day. Sure enough, it seems I was the first woman to vote in these here United States. I'm Charlie Parkhurst, and that's my story. Hi, my name is Dara Macy, and I'm an educator, public speaker, and actor from Interactive Entertainment. I portray Charlie Parkhurst, a famous stagecoach driver and very special person in our history. You see, Charlie was born female and lived his entire life as a man. He drove stagecoaches and lived as a farmer in Northern California. Charlie Parkhurst was evidently the first person assigned female at birth to vote in the United States election. It's important to me to represent this character and speak about this person in history who is transgender and the compassion, acceptance, and kindness we should all strive for today. You can hear more about my story and meet me in person as Interactive Entertainment is able to get back to work on the trains and Wild West show events around the area. For now, please follow us on Facebook at Interactive Entertainment, and I look forward to meeting you in person and telling you more about my story and Charlie's story.